Uh, yep, you bet. Uh, good morning, and uh, just rolling from South Carolina uh, to Tennessee. Uh, guys, uh, start the week, you know, as we always do with Sunday, and uh, just you know, bringing a good mindset, uh, putting the work into the workouts, uh, wanting to, you know, continue to always uh, learn and uh, get better from uh, the the things that happen on a Saturday, and uh, you know, a lot of highlights. Uh, obviously, a lot of things that we always got to cl continue to clean up, and it's in all phases of the game. But uh, you know, moving to uh, moving to Tennessee, we know we're uh, really looking forward to you know uh, exciting. Obviously, it's a, this game is a big deal to uh, you know to fans and obviously to us, and we understand that's the case for them as well. So, looking forward to a, a really you know high level, heightened uh, you know week with preparation uh, and a big game on Saturday. Thanks, Coach. We'll start with Nick. Start right. Yeah, following up about. Tennessee, uh, what have you been told about this rivalry or what have you seen from it, maybe from afar? Yeah, I've been told it's a big deal, and I know it's a big deal. You know, you see it from afar. And uh, it's, you know, these are the games, uh, much like we've had, a, you know, uh, already one or a couple here, you know, and just, uh, you know, they're the big ones uh, that are on the schedule. Uh, I mean, as a coach, they're all big, right, in different ways, and you take one at a time, but we certainly understand the, the, uh, significance of the rivalry and you know guys are going to be uh, very motivated to go out and do their best and prepare well and be great on Saturday. Just sitting at the, the midway point in the regular season how would you assess the defense's play from an execution standpoint? Yeah I think there's uh, every week something a little different that presents itself I know the last couple of weeks uh, the big thing that's been focused on has been uh, getting off the field and so you know you look at yards per play and we're making some teams earn it, but we just got to get off the field. And when those drives continue to stack on top of each other and there's more plays that your defense is having to play, um, you know, it starts to wear, wear you down and uh, a little bit more. Um, I think our guys, you know, fortunately we rotate enough in to where uh, we, can, we can hang in there for, for four quarters. But, um, you know, there's always going to be little elements and it's not just defense, but it's offense and areas that, you know, are going to pop up and the way people attack and the way someone may view your your schemes or your personnel. Uh, and so, you know, you continue to work on those things that we know uh, we got to get better at and emphasize, but we also got to be ready for those other things too that uh, just are part of the game um, and making sure we, we, we got the answers, whether it's uh, schematics or just that our guys are confident going out there and playing. Um, this is part of the process. This is part of the progress that's got to be there when you're instituting new systems. Um, I was thinking, you know, I, I saw this, uh, it must have been South Florida week, and I was sitting there watching last year's game, and I've had this happen everywhere I've been, but, you know, you, you look at a play call, all right, and, and I happened to watch the South Florida game of us versus them last year, and the play calls from last year are on that, on that play, and those play calls have the same names, right? It's just called something different. But there might be play calls that are called something like a year ago that are something completely opposite or different in your system. And I, you know, that's just something that's just part of the progress is guys processing. Um, you're throwing something new at our, our guys uh, to add to our schemes, to add to our concepts and the depth of what we do each and every week. And then they also have to do uh, what we're doing and execute well against whatever we're seeing in front of us. And you try to find that fine balance on running what is your identity, uh, what is your DNA uh, of, of um, you know, the systems you run, but also continue to build on those maybe families of what you do well or continue to just grow, you know, the entire offense, defense, special teams. So um, this is just part of it. Been through it many times. A lot of the ups and downs that you have or maybe just – execution didn't it go as well as you want you know sometimes that's not the the base stuff you do but it's just the things that you know you have to continue to incorporate uh to continue to get to where you want to be because it's got to be a volume of things uh over the course of a 12 13 14 or whatever the season is and the length of it so chase left side Coach Womack was asked this a minute ago, but I want to ask you as well. The shovel pass has hurt y'all defensively. Obviously, the last couple of games, South Carolina came back with one after Vanderbilt sprung two. 
just from a game planning standpoint, is that something you, you got to expect to see once a week until you get a stop? No question. I mean, someone, and it's going to get thrown at you different ways, you know, the personnel or the formations that people line up in. You're going to try to find, you know, from an offensive standpoint, putting those, you know, shoes on and just trying to, you know, uh, understand what that's going to look like in their scheme. And so it's going to be presented a different way. Um, you know, it's 15, 20 years ago, I was running that quite a bit myself. It's uh, because it's a play that, you know, you have to defend. And, you know, again, it might be presentation off of a boot. It might be presentation of a sprint out option. Um, but you got to identify where everyone's at. Everyone's got to fit their gaps. Apply your rules is really the significance of it. And, you know, people are going to use different things to try to really challenge your eye discipline uh, as a defense. And that's one of the plays that uh, obviously the last two weeks has been utilized in that way to challenge us in that in that regard. Got a few questions from the back of them, Ryan. Coach, college football is based on a lot of traditions, a lot of games. To piggyback off what Nick asked you, what did you hear about this Tennessee game? And kind of a two-parter, are you a fan of cigars? <laughs> Um, I know that uh, this tradition goes back quite a ways. I know that cigars are a part of it, um, but I know that what I'm trying to do is just make sure we do our part as a football program and uh, you know prepare uh, so that people can celebrate and enjoy the rivalry uh, on our end. And uh, a lot of respect for Tennessee, uh, their coaches, their players, but uh, you know we're just pouring into the things we can control, what we can focus, and. Uh, you know, want to bring that joy to, you know, not just uh, the hard work we put in personally and within this team, but also so our fan base can uh, enjoy it as well. Hey, Coach, I believe just a few targets to Ryan Williams in the first three quarters of the game. As you guys go through conference play, how do you balance trying to get him the ball and also versus what the defense is maybe giving you? Yeah, there's a couple more that, uh, you know, we didn't get where it didn't get the get to him or get completed, uh, ones where we were really trying to uh, be intentional, uh, whether it's a screen or just a matchup one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, there's another one or two where the ball in a progression uh, very well could have got to him, uh, just like the other plays that he's had throughout the season where he might not be the number one option, but the progression will a lot of times take you there. Uh, and uh, you know, we, he's he's got to be a guy that we're always really paying attention to as far as the number of targets. And, you know, I think for the most part, we understand who those guys are. And a lot of them are in the starting lineup and, and maybe just uh, the next guys in, you know, that uh, you have to be really uh, make sure in the game plan that they're involved. And so that will always be the case. Uh, we got to continue to emphasize that, something we always look at each and every week as we lay out the whole plan. Um, from the tape, what kind of challenges does Tennessee's quarterback present your defense this weekend? Yeah, I think he's got a, a he's a live arm, uh, extremely talented. Uh, you can tell uh, that they got the skill on the outside to where you know they can hit the home run and make big plays anytime. I think a lot of it is just trying to disrupt him uh, to where the continuity and the flow, um, you know, is just not consistent, and that's going to be. Any, any quarterback every week, that's the goal, is to try to just really cause some chaos and change things up on them. Uh, they get into their tempo uh, off of positive plays, and uh, that's, that's the key, is try to make sure that they don't get into that rhythm. Uh, just like any offense, that's what you're trying to do. And uh, he's talented. You can see it's there. Uh, he's still, I think, growing and developing. And uh, we just got to make sure we disrupt him enough and, and make sure we're, we're showing pictures and, and also Getting, getting, uh, getting bodies on bodies on the outside to where we make uh, life, you know, hard like we would want to any other opponent. Back on the left side of the room, Katie. After Jalen threw that interception at the beginning of the fourth quarter, what did you see from him to kind of bounce back and put the mistakes behind him for the rest of the fourth quarter? And just is that an area he's kind of matured in? Yeah, and I, I was, I'm really intentional with him because I, I know how hard he is on himself, and, you know, this is really going back to. You know, I wasn't with him last year, but I know in spring ball and just how how he was, uh, and knowing uh, that we are you know fighting for each other, fighting with each other. That's just not me and him. That's our football team. When we're in those moments, it's all about moving forward. No regrets when we walk off this football field, knowing we've given everything we've got, and that's just what I try to do uh, when it comes to those times. Not just with him, with our whole team. You know, and and uh, those tight game moments. Um, we're all in this together. And, 
you know, we want to continue to learn. And so I'm, I'm going to remind him, coach him up on the situations we're in, uh, how to apply the things we've talked about, you know, throughout the course of our time together so far, how to learn what's happened in this game, um, and then just continue to move on. And we just keep stacking, stacking these moments on top of these moments. Uh, he'll remember, you know, anything that happened this game, he's going to remember what happened to him, you know, four weeks ago. And uh, that's what I love about him. I mean, he is up here. He lives up here pretty much uh, wanting to be around the coaches. It's not just me, it's other staff members. And, um, you know, just from my standpoint, to answer your question, I think, you know, it's just a matter of continue to move forward, process, you know, go 1-0, and as you've heard many of our players say, and what that all means. Learn from it, flush it, play in the present, next play mindset. Um, you had a pure feature back with Dylan Johnson at, at Washington, but here it's obviously a little bit different with JM and Justice mm -hmm. and obviously Jalen Milrow getting the football. With JM and Justice, I think they're averaging 15 carries per game between the two of them. Um, is that kind of the number that you'd like to see? And does that limit them? Maybe that's the wrong word. Does it limit them in terms of the role they're able to get on as a running back when they're not fed mm -hmm. consistently? Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you want to have two. Uh, we were kind of more forced, uh, as you referred to Dylan a year ago, uh, to have that with some injuries to other guys. Um, at that number, I think we would love to see that be higher. Now, how come that number is lower? I think it gets taken from you know some of J Mills uh, carries, uh, which you know how can you argue with some of that when you're rattling off the runs he's he's had? Uh, there's that fine line on using him and, and keeping him fresh and using these other guys. I thought Jam and Justice ran very hard. I thought the run game uh, in the Georgia game, I thought we were very close to having some runs that really developed. And I thought there was another level of physicality, physicality by our offensive line and an execution that was just uh, not just in practice, but also in the game this close. I thought that would really take the next step in the, in the Vanderbilt game. Uh, felt good about the week of practice. Because of the flow of the game, again, probably not as many carries as in touches. Uh, but you can see there was an intentionality to what we were doing. And it wasn't just maybe in the run game. It's getting them out and doing th different things with them. We've seen you know, touchdown catches and, and uh, you know, balls out uh, on routes uh, to, to both of them. Uh, they're very critical to our offense. They're extremely athletic. Uh, they can do it all. Um, they're you know, every down backs in their own right. And uh, we need to continue to grow. And I think we took another step this week. I think South Carolina had a, a very strong defensive front, not just up front, but tying the linebacker core and how they fit. Uh, and that was going to be a challenge going in. And I thought we took another step in our physicality and our execution. thought those guys ran hard as well. Coach, what's the in-game adjustment process like between you and Coach Womack? Yeah, I think, I think the key in any game plan is to try to have as, I mean, really almost everything you have uh, in the plan as far as your adjustments. Now, when you're on defense, I think there, is, there are some things that will pop up that you haven't seen on film uh, that you have that you got to, you know, refer back to something that you've done with calls in the past. And, you know, you try to really minimize that as much because the things you practice are the things that guys are comfortable with, especially week five, six, still as a new as a new team with a new defensive scheme. And so, you know, we don't have a lot of these banked reps from a year ago with all our guys or even 10 or 11 games worth. Uh, it's it's new things that pop up and we try to make the simplest adjustments to where our guys can still play fast down the road. This will all continue to bank as far as the reps we have, the experiences we have. We can recall on something that we did as an adjustment you know, in the past, uh, hopefully in the future, and uh, you know, execute quicker uh, and better uh, in the in the games ahead. But uh, as far as the process between he and I, um, he's just we're just constantly you know between series, um, you know, talking on the phones real quick, uh, just like I do with the offensive side, just hearing what what the next move is, or you know, for offense would be what hey, what are you thinking the next drive? What's the what's the starter? Um, you know, what's your next third and medium, third and short, third and long? And then also defensively, you know, what are some of those adjustments maybe in those situations um, or how we think they're going to come out based on the flow of the situation in the game? Uh, let's finish up with Tony here. 
Is it easier or, or harder to, to scout a team when it's struggling? Because you, you know you're going to get maybe some changes from them, but at the same time, maybe you're seeing their their weaknesses. What is it? Does it? Uh, what, are you referring to obviously? Are, what are you? Scouting any opponent? Any opponent? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you know that they're gonna, they're they're going through it, and just I mean, I'm speaking really generally right now because that's the question. So. Um, yeah, you know that they're going to ch continue to try to find the things that really work well for them, and uh, you got to be ready for anything and everything. Um, but I think at this point in the year, there's still going to be some type of basis that you work off of, and you know those added things. Um, I mean, they got to execute them well too, and that's where we're at. You know, we got things that we want to add in and continue to do, um, but we got to get enough reps at them in practice to on top of the things that we already a part of our identity. Um, because if you can't execute it well in an SEC game when things are moving that fast and there's that many good players on the football field, you know, that can that can backfire, that can hurt you. And so uh, the key is is, you know, making sure we do what we do, apply our rules and everything that we have, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, um, and then be disciplined with it. And that's, you know, gonna be the name of the game here, you know, this week, every week moving forward. All right, thanks, uh, thank you. Roll tide.